Well, there's no fooling around today. We're thrifting again. And take a look at what I find immediately. Boy, this is a beautiful piece of Art Deco glass. I don't know who made it. I love the color of it and the Deco style. So what I'm doing now is just kind of twirling it around on the floor. I feel like I should have some idea, but I'm puzzled. I look at the bottom. You and I are going to see here. We see lots of wear around the perimeter. That's the highest part of the base, which you would expect to see scratched. I see a polished pontal. All of this is indication of wear and age, especially the scratches on the bottom. Now I know, as I said before, they can be replicated, but the form is Art Deco. The glass is good glass. I really like it. It's going in the cart. Got to do a lot of studying to try to figure it out. And there's an, uh, I think it's Atlantic mold. And of course you could put napkins or Christmas cards in there. It's pretty dirty, but it'll wash up well. And the vintage Christmas ceramic items are still pretty hot. So I was happy to find that. But I love that piece of Art Deco glass. Can't wait to find out who made it. Haven't really looked in any of my books yet. Okay, that was an abrupt switch, but here we are. Um, mm, a little basket there. That's pretty nicely done. I'm still here. <laughs> I'm just, I'm kind of watching the shelves, you know, the way you are. It's different when you do a voiceover from home. You see things differently you didn't see when you were looking through the viewfinder. And um, because, you know, good pieces of clear glass can camouflage itself. I wasn't over the top about that. It had some iridescence uh, to it. But. It wasn't something I decided I would uh, purchase or put it back. Mm. All right, Will, there's one of the ball pitchers with the ice lip that you love. Uh, and you see that? I'm, I'm sure it's anchor hocking. Well, I'm not sure why I'm trying to show you my wrist. Here we go. Take a look at the bottom. You see that circle? I'm running my hand around it, that little tiny bubble circle. I see that on the bottom of all kinds of anchor hocking uh, pitchers. But there's just an anchor hocking feel. They made a lot of these slant um, uh, ball pitchers that sit on the angle. And it was only $4 and it was etched. I probably should have gotten it. It's, it's pretty, but uh, I've got a couple of the ball pitchers to sell. So I didn't buy it, Will. There's a nice um, button. Button and something. I can't see if it's daisy and button or button and I guess it is. I didn't buy that either. Ooh, some of those glass pit pitchers are heavy. That's why our grandmothers didn't need to go to the gym. Man, I'll tell you what. Ooh, I don't like old kitchen people's petrified pears in vinegar and oil and stuff like that. I mean it's okay for decor but I wouldn't want to buy it used. Now the only other thing you didn't see me grab is this nice little cranberry piece which I'm gonna hold on to until the autumn season and put it all together when I do my big fall extravaganza. Remember those from last year? Oh my goodness I'm not gonna do nearly as much as I did uh, last year, this year. I don't, I don't have as many fall items. Mm, oh, Homer Lachlan Best China. Restaurant wear stuff. Mm, that's bound to be English, but I didn't. I'm not one of these people that murders the Goodwill sticker. It makes me so annoyed when people do that. 
I think it's quite rude. Um, restaurant where, you know, they they want to see the label and they pick that sticker back and they, they ruin the barcode and it just creates all kind of problems. I wish people wouldn't do that. Mm. Now this is a heartache. And I'll tell you what, I didn't buy it. There's a couple reasons why. It's chipped and stained and it was a little more than I wanted to pay for something that had chips and stains on it. It's clearly 1930s, 40s. I love those colors, cream and green. Yeah. Nesting dishes, they match. It looked, you see the chip there? It looked English to me. I didn't recognize it as anything American made, but when I turn it over, um, uh, let's see. Uh, it's Australian. Australian design. Carlton Ware. Okay, now I know I've got uh, folks, friends in, uh, see it was $7. Uh, what do you think everybody in Australia? Uh, actually, hmm, if it's still there on half price, I'll buy it. I just, I don't like to buy, you know, that chip on the side there. I know a lot of folks say, well, you're, you're just too picky about things. Well, I am discerning. Uh, it's crazed, and then there was staining in the in in the uh, porcelain there, or in the ceramic. I'm still trying to decide, as you can see. I really, really, really wanted it. Oops. Okay. Sorry. I should have edited that out. I don't know where I am now. Well, I know where I am now, but I mean, well, you know what I mean. Hmm. Oh, drat. Plastic. I got fooled by plastic. How rude. I should have known it was way too fluorescent. Oh, 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 oh. English hobnail. Westmoreland. Mm hmm. Not Anchor Hawking's uh, Miss America, but it looks, the two patterns look alike. Candlesticks, and I'm feeling them up here. And ooh, 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 right there. See that? Mm, a nasty chip. And it's a chip right on the edge. You know, you're not going to be able to hide that. So not real expensive and not rare. And because that chip is on the upper outer edge, not going to do it. And here's a mixed batch. Now that one piece had an H for haul. And then this other piece says Taiwan on it. Yeah. See there? I don't really, I don't know, I've never sold, I remember that brown stuff when I was a kid, different people had it. I've never tried to sell any of it. Do you guys uh, like it? Do you sell it? And, and collect it? Now I know you saw something that looked like a milk glass dresser tray, but it wasn't. Um, here's one of those 1960s chafing dishes. It was all right. Oh, well, I guess it was didn't thrill me that much. And one of those pans to put a steak on and collect the juices in the bottom. Sometimes they do pretty well, depending on the maker. But that one, eh. This turned out to be some really inexpensive silver plate. Nineteen thirties chrome uh, cream and sugar, but you can see the really cheap, and the chrome plate is coming off. So, look out, lemons and limes! You're getting reamed. Not by that one. It had a big old chip in it. All right, go get your cart. Oh, there's a teapot with no lid. Mm-hmm. I see glass bake. You see it down there? All right. Turn the corner. There's a piece of uh, Manhattan by Anchor Hawking. I didn't buy that because I already have it. So... 
but there it is. Nice deco uh, pattern from the 30s. You see, there is an awful lot of clear glass on these two shelves to be picked through. I didn't say hello to everybody. Hi, everybody. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, but I knew it wasn't old, and I'm going to show it to you. Who do you think made it? Turn it upside down. Made in China. Oh, my goodness. So, it can fool you. All right. Uh, that thing is a, uh, mm, a fern, what do you call it? A fern, a ferner, ferner. It's a, it's a three-legged thing. Fern bowl, fern dish, ferner. $10. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it wasn't shipped either. Uh, what are we doing? Oh, I'm trying to show you the mark. Can you see? Uh, it's stamp. It's marked on the inside. Sometimes these are, and most of the time they're not. But it doesn't really make it any more valuable. It's nice. Now this, this, this. I did purchase this. When I saw it, it reminds me of a pattern called, uh, I want to say Plymouth. And I still have not seen now somebody murdered. I did not do that. Don't get mad at me. I had to explain to the lady when I went up to the checkout counter. I didn't do that. But feel the bottom. Okay, there. You see the bottom is polished. Okay. Polished bottom. And it's, it's very 1930s, 40s. There's a pattern, and I think it's called Plymouth. And I can never remember whether it's Faustoria or Fenton. Now look at this. And you say, oh, what a shame. Somebody put spray paint all over it. That's under the glaze. That's made that way, that splatter. It looks like an American bisque bottom, right? Is that, yeah, American bisque. But uh, I, I don't find that very attractive. I'm not sure if, well, it's, it's a cat whose skirt doesn't it's a cat with a belly and a bunny and splatter all over it. I just don't know. I mean, what do you think? It's not the most attractive piece of pottery in the world. Especially if it's supposed to be for a child. That would give me a nightmare. Is it, is it, is it cat and bunny friends and they're out, you know, running around and somebody spray paints them? Well, here's a prime example when it really is helpful to know, uh, to know form. And when I say form, I mean uh, really uh, dimensions, the size of things. Now, when you look at this, you might say, oh, wow, that's a depression green anchor hocking tumbler in the rings pattern. Well, anchor hocking did make tumblers in this green color and with rings but they didn't make them this big. This is way too big. I don't know of any tumblers in the Depression era that are this size. Now, lucky for me, I know this is uh, Martha Stewart, and I think there should be, it's kind of hard to see, but I think uh, Martha Stewart, some MSE, Martha Stewart Enterprises, I think MSE is on the bottom. But if you didn't see it and didn't know it, you might be fooled thinking that is a uh, nice old Depression glass tumbler. But again, very similar to the rings pattern, but way too big. Anchor Hocking did not make tumblers that size. But this is nice anyway. She put that stuff out, I guess it was back in the 90s. Mmm, what else can I find? Well, here's an example of a piece of furniture that our great-grandparents would have known quite well, but I won't go as far as saying it's obsolete today, but you don't find too many people in the market for this particular piece of furniture, at least to purchase it for uh, what it was intended to be used as. And a lot of you have already guessed it is a, a music cabinet, a sheet music cabinet. And sometimes the dimensions were such that you could also put player piano rolls in them. 
many times there's a mirror on the back. I don't know why, but there just always seems to be mirrors on the backs of these sheet music stands. Now we come down here, it has a nice old discussion on the front. And we open it up. And we have some beautifully scalloped shelves. And you can see here, this is a place where you can put your finger in there and just grab the sheet music. So different types of sheet music would fit right in here. And again, as I said, sometimes they're deep enough for uh, player piano rolls as well. Even Victrola records, seven inch Victrola records, uh, phonograph records could be kept in, in this, although this is not necessarily a record cabinet. It's just a music cabinet. Now, uh, sadly, this particular one is uh, of a very unattractive wood. This is just a basic, um, some kind of a hard wood. Uh, there's, there's, it's not mahogany, it's not oak, it's not walnut. And uh, when this was sold, this was originally stained very dark to make it look like it's mahogany. And you can see someone started to strip it. And they got a lot of the finish off, but originally it was stained very dark. And it would have been less expensive than buying one made of mahogany. They weren't expensive when they were new and they were mass produced. And uh, this is the days when everybody had an upright piano and they needed some place to keep their sheet music. Just by chance gonna look and see if there's anything on the back and there isn't I wasn't expecting there to be that's just a factory number there so what would I do if I were to purchase this well it's $50 and it's 20% off uh, what I would do if I were to purchase it would be to completely strip it down to the bare wood go ahead and get the remnants of that finish off and then I would make it look uh, like it originally did, put an extremely dark, dark mahogany finish on it because it was not meant to be this light. If you strip all of this off and, uh, and don't return it to its dark color, it just doesn't look right. For instance, if it were this color. Well, that's it. If you ever see one of these and wonder what it is, it's a music cabinet with a door that does not quite want to stay shut. I guess it feels a song coming on. Okay, from a lovely old circa 1912 music cabinet, there's some really tacky lamps. Mm. Oh my gosh, the 1960s, you got a lot to explain for. Ooh. All right, let's see what else we can find.